that I don't actually really do the paintings. They just come through me. I look at them and I think, how on earth did I do that? I'm not that good an artist. I've never considered myself to be, you know, a great artist. Um, and it's just the, the angels paint through me and I just keep painting and it's like playing really until they're, they're just done. Now, my daughter, who is a wonderful healer, was doing um, a healing on someone who was very, very ill. And there were two, two people doing the healing and um, she called upon Archangel Michael to come in and help with the healing. Most of us just feel the presence of angels. I think most people do. You're aware of um, feeling good. It, it happens in all different ways. But anyway, this day, she was amazed because he, she actually saw him come in. And she said he was just so enormous. He had to bend down to fit in the room with these huge golden wings. And she talked to him. Oh, and incidentally, how he did the healing was she said his wings were almost on swivels and they actually enfolded the person on the bed. It was quite incredible. And she talked to him and she said to him, your colours are different, most people paint you blue. And he said, yes, they do, but that, that's sort of connecting to the, the wrong place. He said, this is, these are my colours. And he asked her to describe him to me so I could paint him. How's that? I was so honoured. So she came and sat and I began painting and she'd say, bigger wings, bigger wings. No, 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 golder, golder, bigger, you know. And that's how I came to do my first um, Archangel painting, and that was of Archangel Michael. I felt like I was sitting, you know, the police artists, you know, they sit and they describe what someone looks like. That's what she did for Archangel Michael. The, the colours in the angel paintings are quite important, and I'm finding almost colours that almost don't exist. Um, they're so vibrant. Using the, um, the inks, you know, in digital printing is wonderful because it gives you that um, translucent, sort of heavenly um, light um, look to them. And um, I think there are colours coming in. You know, we're seeing different colours now than what we did see. In fact, even in materials, we've got these beautiful um, bright colours, almost iridescent colours being um, manufactured. And I think our colour sense is heightening as we um, raise up in vibration. And th the colours themselves are healing. And one thing I've often said is I don't feel that the form of the angel is so important. It's actually the energy and the emotion um, that is portrayed, that, that people feel from it. Um, and I have never even felt that the actual names of them was important too because it's what vibration um, is right for a certain person. Um, but I must say that names did come uh, later. Um, people seem to need names and so I was given them. Thinking of pictures as being healing is an unusual thing. We don't usually, we think of art as being beautiful and enhancing an area, but I think of it as being energetic and healing um, and not everyone wants an angel in their living room but they want lovely energy that people use feng shui and they use chinese artifacts and that so um, i've begun to paint um, what i call angels in nature series where i, I paint um, beautiful flowers perhaps with some angels or davas flying around that you might be able to find if you look carefully they're not um, very big there but they're still there and all of the paintings like that do have angels behind them as well so they have the same um, energy and then we realized that as I was doing some of these flowers that they actually related to the chakras and we produced um, a series of seven chakra cards that we used for healing we would place them on a bed in line with the chakras where someone would lie and we found that that really enhanced the healing effects of um, hands-on healing reiki um, whatever healing is being done that was quite amazing to do that and we also um, made some essences from crystals that relate to the same to the chakras as well the crystals was an amazing thing. If you, I'm not a crystal person. I love crystals, but I don't know anything about them. In fact, I don't know anything about much at all. <laughs> I get taught and I learn as I go along. I bought some crystals. My daughter loves crystals, and I had a man come from Madagascar with exotic crystals one day, and um, they were beautiful. And I bought far too many. <laughs> 
you know what it's like when you love them so much. And when he'd gone, my daughter and I sat um, here in the kitchen at the table and we looked at the crystals and we thought maybe we should reprise some of them and look and see what we've got. And we started to take them out of their little cellophane coverings. And I held one up to the light and I couldn't believe that it actually spoke to me. I held one up and I knew it was the spirit of Atlantis that had like a little city in it. And there was one with Archangel Michael and my daughter was having the same, we both were having the same experience with different crystals so we got pen and paper and wrote it all down. And it's amazing to me how these things can happen very quickly if you are in a connected space. My daughter was then asked to make these crystal essences and given the recipes, she went outside, sat um, in the garden and wrote in an exercise book pages and pages of recipes for what became our crystal clear elixirs, um, one for every chakra. And they had the crystals in them, also some flower essences and essential oils. And it was just absolutely incredible. And I mean, everybody, if you, if you do connect to spirit and you do allow, you can all do this. There are no limits to what a human being can do if you allow it. So I'd, I'd painted lots of angels, archangels, angels in nature. And the first, I, I was fascinated with female um, ascended masters. I, I started out, my first um, female was to do what I called the goddess of compassion, which is um, with a little baby and, and it's just beautiful. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I wanted to do it for a long time. And then I had two experiences. I had two people f fairly close to me um, had breast cancer and they died of breast cancer th at this time. And it was enough to trigger this within me and I could then paint the Madonna of Compassion. And actually my painting um, now hangs in one of the special rooms for um, the family at um, Bethlehem Hospital. I was able to do the other, I, Kwan Yin came beautiful, very different, they're very different from the normal depictions, very energetic. One of the extraordinary ones was Lady Rowena, who I'd never heard of. I just started to do this incredible energetic painting and when I'd finished I looked at it, it was very quick and I thought, who, who are you? You know, it's so beautiful. And this very powerful voice, rather husky, said, I am Lady, I am Rowena. And I thought, oh, um, I didn't know who Rowena was, so I did look it up, and there is a lady Rowena, and people did speak of similar colours and flowers, and so, again, it was just, oh, yes, I got it right sort of moment. Um, and Lady Portia, Lady Portia is the um, is justice, justice and mercy, very um, powerful, um, very compassionate. And what I find with the Lady Masters is that the compassion... You can feel it emanating from these paintings. They just seem to look at you with this incredible look of compassion, particularly Lady Portia, whose eyes just sort of drill into you. I've had people come and sit near the paintings and talk of experiences they've had, and often experiences with, you know, things that are unfair happening, and, and you see Lady Portia sort of looking at them with such compassion and understanding. And of course, all we need to do is ask for help. The angels are always there for us. The ascended masters are there for us. Whenever you're in trouble or despair or ill or in pain, just ask for help. We had a very ill um, woman in the last stages of cancer um, come here for healing. She lived just round the corner and we did um, a healing on her, several of us. And it was a miracle because she was on um, morphine and she was in a lot of pain. And during the healing, she just seemed to change. She stopped moaning um, and she actually walked out. She was virtually carried in and she went home. And we continued the healing, just, we just gave our healing. We, she was such a beautiful person. And we used to go regularly around there. And she never had any more morphine, just the Reiki energy and the Reiki does really connect you to your own spirit. And she was a very spiritual person. Um, and it was enough. She never had any more re um, morphine. We Reiki'd her for about two weeks off and on. And the last time I Reiki'd her, she was in her kitchen 
Um, her daughter was cooking dinner. The um, all of the family were on the on Skype, able to communicate with her and watching her. I was just raking her, and I had the feeling that it wouldn't be long before she made her transition, and that it would be like a joyous occasion. And I had two smells, beautiful scents, come to me, and it was like the male and the female. And since they were Hindus, and I actually got the words that it was Lord Shiva came and the Divine Mother and the, these incredibly beautiful scents. Anyway, the next day I think she did get worse and my daughter came and worked with her. And she went to sleep that night and her daughter slept in the same room and she tells this beautiful story that she heard her mother stirring in the middle of the night and she was lifting up her arms like this, almost in e ecstasy. And she just died, just took her last breath. And in the morning she called us and asked us to come around and we were so privileged to be part of this. In Australia, we think of dying as a horrible experience, something we don't want. In the Hindu tradition, they sort of celebrate it. They all gather together, they have prayers. The children were in the room bouncing on the double bed. We were there and the mother was there and she was positively glowing. I have never seen anything like it. She was glowing. It was a joyous occasion. And death is just a transition into another way of being. Um, the person is often still with us. Thoughts of them bring them to us. But um, they're, they're in a pain-free, ecstatic zone. And in cases like that, you would never, never wish them back. And this was a truly joyous occasion. And these people, um, they all flew back um, to where she came from, which was, I think, Malay Sri Lanka or Malaysia. And they spent a month doing prayers and songs for her. It was just, it's just incredible. It's such a different experience over here, but it can be a beautiful experience, particularly if everyone is ready to let them go. I myself um, had the experience of thinking that I was going to die. I was basically sent home to die and four times I felt that I, it was time for me to go and I welcomed it. I was in such pain. And when it didn't happen, I wasn't very happy <laughs> um, because I had looked forward to it. You know, I didn't want to come back to this pain and suffering. But miraculously, death spat me out. <laughs> and I had to come back and continue this um, incredible journey that is life. And you never know what's around the corner. And you know what? You can actually cope with any single thing that life throws at you. That's what we're here for. We're here to learn to cope with it, to go through it, to come out the other end of it. And at the end of it, to joyously let go and go on into the next realms. So how did I get into spiritual life? Well, I was an ordinary housewife and a mother, and I, but I always knew there was more, and I think most of us do. We just put that aside. But I always knew there was more. And when I went, um, Mum sent me to Sunday school, made me go actually, and I used to listen to what they said and I used to think, that, but there's more than this, there's far more than this. It, you know, it was nice, but it wasn't right. And then one day when I was sent to Sunday school, they hadn't read the newsletter, I hadn't brought it home. It, what, there was no Sunday school and um, we had to go into the church. Well, that was an incredibly different experience. I walked into that church and you know I felt something. I look back, I know it was the energy. I felt the energy, the spiritual energy and the church had affected me. The singing, all of that was so different from the intellectual and um, aspect of the Sunday school teaching you things and just games. And I have always loved going into churches and feeling them and it's just another, it's a way, it's spiritual energy. It's high dimensional spiritual energy. So how did I get into this journey? Okay, well, I had four children. It's challenges in life that send us on to the next step of our journey. So four children, all very independent, strong children and difficult. And I had to find a way of coping. And I had to find a new way of looking at life so that I could cope. 
I be, went to yoga and that was one of the main things. I also, a friend of mine um, really helped me when she said to me that your children choose you, you don't choose your children. And she said many other spiritual things to me. And I asked her how she knew all of this stuff. And she said when she was young, she'd had problems and her mother sent her to a spiritual teacher. Well, I knew in my heart that I had to go and see this spiritual teacher. She was still alive and it was so strong in me, you know, I had to do it. So I rang her and made an appointment. She wouldn't see me individually, but she'd had yoga classes. So I went to a yoga class and I took my second, my first son with me who was extremely independent, didn't want to go to school, knew everything. And she told me, this teacher said, he's an old soul. He'll make his own way. And that made a huge difference to me. She also taught me that you know truth. When you hear truth, you know it. Um, she also said that everything that she'd learned, she didn't learn from books. It came from within and from what she would term spirit. Um, and she taught me so much in two sessions. And I had such a burning um, desire to learn everything from her. And there was a part of me that felt that I had to do it now. And the, for, when it became time to go to the third session, I couldn't go. It was raining and I couldn't go. This is intuition at work. She died that day. She wasn't there. I was saved from going all that way and finding that. And I felt that she'd waited for me, that we'd had some sort of covenant. And um, she taught me basically everything I needed to know in those two sessions. She talked about things like reincarnation, which actually put two and two together. When I was looking at ordinary religion, I could, it just didn't make sense. I knew there was more and that was you know, part of the puzzle. There are teachers everywhere for us. You know, You find the teacher that's right for you. You'll feel and know when it's truth that you're hearing, take that within and learn from it and listen to yourself, to your, your inner knowing. It's most important, we all have it. We are incredible, we are incredible. Human beings are incredible. We have incredible power, incredible strength and we can basically do anything. Don't let ever people ever say to you that you're sick and you will die. Take no notice, do what's right for you. Examine everything and do what feels right for you. It's most important. I sell a lot of paintings online um, and I try and keep them really affordable. One of the reasons the angels wanted me to do digital art is so as everybody could have one. You know, you $10, $20 or $6,000 if you want a great big, <laughs> beautiful um, canvas print. And it, it, it amazes me when I sell them online that I will sell maybe three or four pictures of the same angel on the same day. It's really weird. It's like there's a particular energy needed on this day. People are tuned into that level of energy. Um, and on different days, it's different angels. And uh, I find here that it's different angels that I'm attracted to on different days. And it's because it's the angel with the energy that we need. It fills our what we need in energy, that's the one that we're attracted to. And it changes, it changes all the time. And what I do feel is that the angels actually use the paintings as a healing, um, a way of healing that they uh, come through the paintings. If people concentrate on a painting, it's like just asking that angel to come and help them, but it's a different way of choosing. It's a different way of looking at it. <laughs>